in the last lecture we met uh, the scipy integrate methods that is methods from the scipy dot integrate sub module uh, which involved integrating of functions using samples of function values so we met the traps function briefly then we went on to describe sims in more detail which essentially takes a sample of values which the fun integrand takes and carries out a Simpson one third new integration for the result. Now, in this lecture, what we are going to do is take a look at the quad function which scipy.integrate provides. From the name, it is obvious that it is a quadrature algorithm. In particular, it, what it really does is Gauss quadrature. Or to be more precise, what it does is adaptive gauss Conrad quadrature, something we have described in the numerical integration part of the lectures. So this may be a good time to go back and review that video if you have not done that already. But let me now just explain to you how quad can be used. So one important distinction between sample integration methods like uh, traps and sims and function integration quadrature methods like quad is that the latter actually takes in the function as the argument not the values which the function takes so let me illustrate this with a very simple example so we define a simple function using the lambda keyword remember all we are saying here is x maps into some function, let's say 100 or maybe x was 99, that would be easier to figure out what the exact answer is. So let me try integrating this function x to the power 99 from 0 to let's say 1. The way we do this Using sims, remember, is to produce an array of x values between 0 and 1. Calculate the sample values with the, or sample, or rather sample the values which the function f takes on these x values and supply the array of y values and x values to sims as an argument. With quad, things are a bit different. What we will do is call quad, which is called si. si because simply because we have invoked the mantra already that scipy.integrate the submodule has been imported as si so this really is scipy.integrate.quad which I can abbreviate to si.quad then si.quad takes three mandatory arguments what are they? the name of the function notice this is a function that I am giving as the argument not uh, the values which the function takes then the lower limit in the upper limit. If I do this, I immediately get this. So what is this telling me? First of all, notice that I am not getting a single number as an answer, I am getting a tuple. So what the quad function returns by default is this. It returns a tuple, the first element of which is the answer or the approximate answer, the estimated answer to the integration. And the second number, which you see in the tuple here, something of the order of 10 to the minus 15, is actually an error estimate. Remember, as I said, what this really does is not Gauss quadrature. It does adaptive gauss Conrad quadrature. I'm going to explain what this means briefly again. I've already done that before in a, in a video lecture on gauss Conrad quadrature, but what this does is that it returns along with the value of the integral an estimate of the error in that what the word adaptive in the name means is that if the error turns out to be too big in the first go the algorithm partitions the interval of integration into two pieces carries it out again over the individual pieces estimates the error again and again and again until the error that we can tolerate has been reached So how does a 
numpy me whatever we can tolerate? The answer is there is a default value for that. But there's also an argument which you can change. Now, uh, what what does by default is either 1021 gross cron rod or 715 gross cron rod, which essentially means carries a 10 point gross quadrature to find a first estimate of the value and then a 21 point cron rod quadrature which reuses those 10 points which you use for gross so that you don't waste your calculation uh, to get a more accurate answer and the difference between the two is estimated as the error. So in one go, cross cron rod quadrature essentially uses just 21 function evaluations. But this particular result that we have got, a result which is accurate up to 10 to the minus 15, for a function which is as high a degree polynomial as x to the power 99, is really not something you would get out of 21 function evaluations. So this is where the adaptive bit comes in. First time around, the error was too big. Then the algorithm automatically cut down the interval, repeated it again and again until it got to a result which was tolerable for us. Okay. So let me just show you what other arguments you can give to quad by consulting the quad documentation. If you look at the standard documentation which is there in the scipy.org homepage, you get to see this. The name of the function is scipy.integrate.quad. The first argument which you have to give is func, the name of the function. Now, then comes the lower limit A, the upper limit B, and then comes a slew of optional arguments. I will explain what those arguments are, at least some of them, in a minute. Um, but notice that we have this eps abs argument, which by default takes 1.49 to the minus 8, which is the absolute error which is to be tolerated by default. So if the error falls below 10 to the minus 8 in some evaluation, then Gauss quadrature is this, uh, the quad will happily return it. You also have eps well, another argument, which talks about the relative error. If epsaps is not specified, then epsil takes over. Of course, if it is specified. Otherwise, the uh, default value of 1.49 to the minus 8 for epsaps is a tolerance which the algorithm looks for. Epsil is, of course, a relative error. That is, not just the absolute difference between the two estimates, but the relative difference between the two, fractional difference between the two estimates. There is another argument called limit as you can see and this limit is simply the number of maximum number of subdivisions that is going to be used here. So if uh, by default if quad reaches 50 subdivisions and still does not get to the tolerance level, it will actually tell you that this is a very slow function may not be converging rapidly enough, but it will then return the value. But the other arguments are will come to later, in fact, most of them will not bother with. But there are two arguments here which are often very useful. One of them is args and the other is full underscore output. As you can see, args has a default value which is denoted by a pair of empty brackets that really means its default, its value is a tuple. Right now it's an empty tuple. And full output is a number, which is 0 by default, which essentially means it's turned off. Any non-zero value would mean it's turned on. So let us see how and why we need the args argument. And for that, let us change our integrand function. So instead of a simple power of x, let us look at slightly more complicated function which is a, the Gaussian function. So we define f once again. 
So x maps into x minus x zero whole square. Let's say this is the function that we want to talk about. Well, actually, this has three arguments, not just x. It has a as an argument. It has x zero as an argument. Okay. So we have a three argument function. X, of course, is a variable which we are really worried about. A and x zero really are parameters here. So now that we have this function, let's say we want to integrate this. Well, we will quad from let's say minus one to plus one. So we will try si dot quad name of the function the limits, and now I get into a trouble. The trouble is. This trouble is quite clear from here. It says lambda, there's an unknown function. Remember, it's not saying f because the function really has no name. F is just a variable which is holding that. Takes exactly three arguments, one given. Well, I say you have never given an argument given. So why is it still one given? The answer is simply this. When you do Gauss quadrature, if you remember what is done, is that by using the standard nodes for that particular order Gauss quadrature, the algorithm selects values of x at which the function is to be evaluated. So given the upper and the lower limits, the algorithm already knows what the values of x are for which it is going to evaluate the function. So the algorithm, the quad algorithm supplies f with those values. Well, it does not supply f with the values for a and x0. So, despite the fact that we have defined a function with three arguments, what my quad algorithm is doing is that it is giving the function f only one argument to work with. And so, of course, it's complaining, it's saying that it can't find the value of the other two arguments. Okay. One thought that might cross your mind is that you can try this. You can define the arguments a and x0, say maybe outside of the main loop or main program, and then try running Gauss quad again. That doesn't work either. Why doesn't it work? It doesn't work because uh, this trick of defining the parameters outside would have worked if the f had not been defined with three arguments. If a and x would have been silently put inside the body of the function, then when the program runs and the function cannot find a and x0, defined inside the body, but it needs to use it, it will then look at whatever called it. So here of course the main program is calling it. So it will look at whether it is defined already in the main program. So for the local namespace of within the function, we look into the global namespace. That is how fun Python functions always work. So if I define my function this way, just with a single argument, and then run quad after remember already defining the variables a and x0 in the main program which we have already done it will work happily it will give you a value it will also give you an error estimate nicely uh, so this uh, as long as you are running or writing your own program this is a pretty easy way of getting around such problems you can always define your function with only one argument, the argument that is to be integrated over, and any other argument that you may need, you just keep as parameters within the body of the function, 
don't define them as arguments of the function and before you invoke the function you supply the values by defining them outside Well, this can be done when you are de dealing with your own function it's not always very convenient sometimes these other parameters make much more sense logically as arguments rather than as just numbers which are stuck somewhere in the body of the function also if you are dealing with somebody else's function which might very well happen if you are using a function which is already defined in a module or you are collaborating with somebody else which is the way most software gets written really nowadays then changing the definition of the function just for this may not be a very nice option so let's go back to the original definition with three arguments and see how we can make quad still work as we said this will not work but what we need to do is supply the values for the other arguments the first argument which is by always the one which is integrated over this is something which is important to remember quad always integrates over the first argument of a function with multiple arguments so for the first one the value is taken care of by the algorithm or rather the series of values at which the function is to be evaluated is taken care of by the algorithm so the or other arguments have to be given and for that we have the args argument for the quad function and what args takes as you saw here is a tuple by default the tuple is empty so no extra arguments are given to the function of course you don't need to give uh, if you have to don't want to give extra arguments when the function does not take any extra arguments but now that the function does take extra arguments you have to give the values of a and x0 in a tuple so a of 1.0 and x0 of 0.5 we have to give this way so this is how you can make quad work even if you have a function of multiple arguments this actually is going to be very very important in practical applications and now it works fine of course the value it gives you is exactly the same as the value we obtained earlier when we defined a and x here outside with a single argument function here we have a three argument function quad only supplies the values of the first argument the values of the second and the third argument come in this tuple so this is really the most important thing that you are going to need uh, to be able to use the args the use the quad function well there's one more thing that you may want to look at which is let's put it equal to 1 and then the output looks a lot scarier Well, that, this is the tail end of the output. There's really quite a lot of stuff here. Of course, you said full output, right? You asked for it. But in this thing, you can see that this return is nearly tuple. Always the first element is the result. Second is the error estimate, which is exactly what we had got the last time around, with full underscore output set to zero. So the full output didn't come out. and then comes another and actually believe it or not all the rest is a thing a third object just a third of it there are three objects in the result and this third object you want to look at it more deeply more deeply and see closely let's just save this we have underscore return the last result so which was the tuple that we had Got earlier, and square back up to this picks up the two bit or the third element of the tuple, which is exactly what we want to look at. So, what is this D? This D is actually a dictionary, and this dictionary has, of course, keys and values. So, what are the keys in the dictionary? 
is all list last e list i odd a list b list any val so that's a long list quite a lot of values the values are pretty big as you have seen i really don't want to spend a lot of time describing all of them in detail here that may be too much information the one thing that will be pretty useful for you sometimes is this the any val which is actually the last entry in the dictionary it says any val equals 21 it's telling you exactly how many times the function had to be evaluated here they said we're doing 1021 gauss conrad quadrature which essentially means that you have to integrate 21 times in one go what has happened here is just a 21 point gauss quadrature was enough to give you a good nice estimate and so since the error was below the tolerance level just to check the error came out to be 14 which of course is below the tend to the minus 8 tolerance level that we had set so everybody is happy so although what quad uh, does is adapt to cos quad not quadrature in this case it don't did not really need to quote and quote adapt the first try was good enough now let's just say can we do it over a larger limit say so not from minus 1 to plus 1 let's say from minus 10 to plus 10 well now the value of course has changed a bit because we are integrating over a larger interval so i actually scrolled beyond the last call so let's go back to yeah this is where so it was 1.317 before now we are getting 1.772 the a is still below the tendency minus 8 limit so that is why the algorithm has stopped but notice now that the number of function evaluations is 231 which of course shows that gauss tronrod quadrature had to break up the interval into two pieces then before the two pieces and so on and you end up with 231 function evaluations in all in order to get to the requisite accuracy of below tendency minus 8 and uh, in the full output has a lot of other details it tells you exactly where how the intervals are broken up and so on what weights were used and so on and so forth let us not worry too much about that right now let me just illustrate one thing to you just turn off this full output or option with us bit to much detail we see with minus 1 to plus 1 the value we had the 1.317 <coughs> what the value we should have if you remember your uh standard integrals this is of course not a standard integral but, or it is a standard integral but it's not one whose value you would this be expected to recall of your of the top of your head it depends in a rather complicated fashion on the parameter a However, if I take a large enough interval, then the value should approximate the minus infinity to plus infinity integration, and that is actually square root of pi by a, or square root of pi. Just to look at what we are. expecting this is the value which we are aiming at of course minus 1 to plus 1 will not give you that your function is a gaussian which has a width of 1 which is pretty wide so within minus 1 to 1 you have some of the function but quite a lot of it is outside also remember the center of a function is not at x equal to 0 but at x equal to 0.5 which tells you that quite a lot of the function is outside the minus 1 to plus 1 integral Integration limit, but if we do it from minus ten to plus ten, 
Of course, you expect it to be much better. So it's pretty good actually. It's coming very close to n square root pi result, but minus 100 to plus 100, let's see what happens. That's even better. So things are improving, right? You might have noticed that the last two results were actually the same despite going from minus 100 to minus 1000 to plus 1000 as an interval That's simply because the requisite error was obtained that was remember our limit was 1.49 to the minus 8 that was obtained even at the same number of function evaluations I expect and the Gaussian is already way too small beyond minus 100 to plus 100 to really make much of a difference well just so that you don't think the only way we can handle minus infinity plus infinity integrals if you do this, if you do minus l to plus l and keep on increasing l which is sometimes a legitimate method we will talk about this in more detail when we talk about improper integrals in a later video but let me just assure you that at least quad actually handles infinity limits pretty nicely using the numpy infinity symbol that is np dot n so we do this this is what you get which is if you notice pretty close the last few digits here in n square root pi is 159 this is 163 so this is really pretty close to your result that you want so we will discuss exactly how quad handles this uh, infinity limits later when we talk about improper integrals but let me just warn you that despite the wonderfully nice results that we have had so far it's not all completely rosy here you need to exercise caution when you are using such integration routines um, there is no substitute for actually understanding what you are doing you cannot just ask the computer to work, do all the work for you so just to illustrate that let me just give an example of one more function this is a pretty simple function it maps x into Maps x into the step function. So it's 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0, else 0. Pretty straightforward function, and we know what the integral is going to be. So we integrate from a negative value to say x equal to 1, the upper limit. Of course, whatever negative value you take does not make a difference to the integral because the integrand is 0 for all negative x so you should expect the integral to be 1 and let's see whether that comes out so si dot quad let's take the function f this has only one argument so no, no need for an args to be supplied and let's say you do it from minus 1 to plus 1 the result you get is perfectly alright, you get exactly 1.0 but the error estimate that you get is of course an over tail is not 10 to the minus 14, the error is here is exactly 0 10 to the minus 14 is of course something close to the machine precision which this particular machine has so this is fine, by indicate from minus 10 to 1 and this is a bit of a difference Let us say minus 1000 to 1. Notice that minus 1000 to 0 contributes nothing to the actual integral, so this should not make a difference. But disaster. The value which is quoting as a result is 0, not 1. And even worse is even giving a completely wrong error estimate. It's telling you that the error is 0. Just to point out what really happened here 
is that the seven, the 1021 Gauss Conrad quadrature that was carried out here. Well, first it carried out 10 point Gauss. The 10 points at which the function was evaluated. Now that the interval is minus 1000 to 1, you scale the nodes accordingly. We turn out that all of the 10 points at which Gauss function is being evaluated is actually for negative x. So, of course, the integral is 0 everywhere. So, get 0 for the Gauss. The Cronrad evaluates the function at 11 more points. And even those 21 points, out of which 10 are actually the old ones, all of them are from negative x. Why? Because my interval is so lopsided, it is from minus 1000 to 1. So the part which actually contributes is right there to one end. And 21 point Cronrad quadrature, all the points are inside the negative region. Which means Gauss quadrature, the 10 point Gauss quadrature gave you 10 points where the integral was 0. And the 21 point Gauss quadrature gives you 21 points at each of which the integral is again 0. So you are ending up with a total integral. So here, both the initial estimate, the Gauss 10 point quadrature estimate is 0, and the next estimate, the Cronrad 21 point estimate, is also 0. Since both evaluations return exactly the same value, the quad algorithm is fooled into assuming or into understanding that the error is 0. And of course, it stops there. What is the changing the epsilon to a lower value, increasing the limits, etc., will make no difference here. After all, it's getting two estimates, both of which exactly match, which are entirely wrong value. That's not what the what the algorithm understands. The algorithm only understands that it's going to evaluate the function integral twice, and if the difference between these two is estimates is too big, then it's going to repeat with a divided interval. So here, you have to pay careful attention to the nature of the integral before you can use quad to actually tell you what the answer is. So if you, for example, try to do an integration of a Gaussian which is too narrow, you may reach exactly the same problem. It may be a very narrow, very high Gaussian whose integral is perhaps 1 or at least something large, Yet the quadrature method might happily tell you that the integral is zero and even tell you that the error is negligible. Why? Because what the estimates it will make will involve evaluating the function at points which are very far away from the center. Hence, it will give you no value at all. So, lesson here is quad is a very, very useful function, but when you use it, you have to pay attention to the nature of the function, where the function value is peaked, and so on. If you just blindly use the quad function, you may run into a lot of trouble.